Hey, I guess you can see the excitement that we're creating here with networks. Nice little diagrams to summarise planning projects and stuff like that, connecting up computers in a network, maybe the plan of a house or the sequence of steps that we have to do to complete a project like building a house or something like that. So come on down and let's see if we can develop this a little bit now. So constructing networks, here's the first one. Make, make a, a local ne area network consisting of three computers connected to a server and to a printer and a scanner. So you can plan out how to link up your computers in the most efficient way. And uh, the nodes here, these points, are the various items and the, uh, or become the edges of your diagram, uh, be sorry, become the vertices of your diagram, and the lines connecting the edges are, are the cables. So that's not a bad way of using a network. What about planning a house like I've just mentioned? This is the first floor of a two-story house, so you come up the stairs, you can go into the lounge, and you can go into the dining room, and then into the kitchen, but you can't actually go from the lounge directly into the bedroom. So how can we indicate that on a diagram? Here it is down here, where the rooms are the nodes and the edges are the doorways. So you can see quite clearly the lounge is not connected to bedroom one. So this is a nice little summary, easier to see if you like, than the actual floor plan of the house. So they are nice little summaries, aren't they, of what's going on. So we're going to build that in this presentation to some really useful stuff. So here's some problems for you here. Well, these uh, screen clippings are from Hayes and Harris Publications. And uh, I want you to try and draw the uh, networks for each of these. And as you do one, just fast forward the presentation and check your answer so you don't go off on the wrong track in, in problem after problem. OK, there's one and two. Let's just complete three here. There's three, work out how uh, Australia's states and territories share their borders, what's connected to what. Well, Queensland's not connected to Western Australia. So uh, how would you represent that on a diagram to summarise that? Question four here. First floor of a house, part A. And then let's go to part B. There we have it. Let's have a look at the answers then. So those, just bring those up here, little diagrams. Just got to check that the right things are connected here in that type of uh, diagram. Okay, let's have a look at question four. Okay, see these are not connected. How did you do that? Okay, what does that mean? What do the nodes mean? What do the edges mean of the diagram? Okay, let's go down now. Oh, I've just flipped it a bit, so uh, come down here. Yeah, we've done that. So here, networks that look different but represent the same information are said to be topologically equivalent or isomorphic. Iso from the Latin means same and morphic shape, same shape. So these two are actually the same shape. Let's check it by checking the connection with each node. A and B are connected in two different ways here. Oh yeah, this is the same. A and B are connected in two different ways. A is only connected to D. Yep, there. D is only connected to A rather. And C is connected to A. It's also connected to B. Yep, so they are topologically equivalent or isomorphic. So in other words, we're checking out whether people drawing the network diagrams are representing the same thing. Let's go down to 7B2 and see if you can match some of these up. Which are topologically equivalent? So start with one and say, uh, is the next one the same or the next one and so on? And just check them out and try to pair them up perhaps. Okay, see how you go with that. And what about this one? Labelling corresponding vertices so they're connected in the same uh, ways they have the same number of connecting edges to uh, other points. Okay, and then uh, your own little one here. Okay, let's go and have a look at the answers there. And there's a few, there's a few different shapes you could have for part three there. 
that are topologically equivalent or isomorphic. Okay, so what are we trying to do? We're trying to say, is the series of events or connections the same in these planning diagrams that we might be doing? Come down now and let's have a look at a really useful uh, way of applying networks. And that's steps involved in a project. What do you do first? Let's say you're going to have a party. What's the first thing? Well, you must find a venue. You might ask your parents, um, can I use the house on this weekend? Good luck with that. And then you've got to look at uh, who, who's coming, the timing, any entertainment, the food, the security and so on. Okay, and building a house, construction of a newsletter, cooking an evening meal. What do you do first? Don't forget something because it won't come together at the end. So you actually plan these things. And some things you can do at the one time, concurrently at the same time. Others you have to wait until something's done first. So planning is very important for efficiency, to be efficient in the tasks that you're doing. And networks can help you with that. So uh, if task B can't begin until our task A is completed, then A is a prerequisite, there's a word, required to be done before, pre. So how do we do this? Well, putting water in a kettle is a prerequisite to boiling it. Okay, so how do you do it? Well, let's list the tasks to complete the project, write the tasks in the order they have to be performed, determine any ones that have to come before the others, and then do a network. And then we have a plan. Good to have a plan if you're doing something fairly complicated. Okay, so let's have a look. Here's an example. You might like to do this one. This is the time it takes to get the cups, if you like, place tea bags in the cups. This would be in seconds and do all these things. You might like to draw a network diagram for that. What has to come before what else? We're going to look at how to do this sort of planning. But the first step is to draw a table like this so that you can see all the steps. And then let's look at it in action now in a harder one, uh, make a homemade pizza. What do you got to do? Defrost the pizza base, prepare the toppings, place the toppings and stuff on the pizza, heat the oven, cook the pizza. So what are our questions? What can you do all together? So you could do A, B and D. You could be playing around with all that at the one time. Get the toppings, put the uh, pizza in the uh, microwave to defrost it, heat the oven. So there you are, they are all concurrent, they can all be done together. Okay, so that's going to improve the efficiency of your preparation of this meal, isn't it? The toppings can't be placed on the pizza until after toppings have been prepared. So task B, preparing the toppers, top, toppings, must be done before task C. That's putting them on the um, pizza. And at the end, A, B, C and D are all needed before E because you can't cook it till everything else is done. So do you get the idea? So this is a good little thing to do. You've got your tasks as before and then opposite each of them, you put what's needed to be done before it. Nothing for here, here and here. They can all be done together with nothing coming before. But C needs B to be done before, and E needs everything to be done. So let's look at the diagram. We start here. You can do A, B, and D all together. But B doesn't end up over here, because once these two are done, you then do C to bring it all together, and then you cook it to go to the end. Can you see a diagram here is an efficient way of summarising the steps that you should be doing to do this project. All right, I want you to try some now, so let's have a look. In these first ones, we're just doing the order of things and then talking about what can be done concurrently, so making up a table. Then we're going to build up from there. So have a go at question one and two. And come down to three here, where you uh, put in the tasks, but then the prerequisites. So you're starting to structure some order and then finish with a diagram for the project. 
So you're going to do it efficiently. All right, let's go down and have a look at question four. All ideas for projects here. And question five. See, this guy hasn't quite done the right thing in building this shed. There's something hanging off here. Shouldn't have been put up yet. Okay. And six and seven. So there we are. Here's the party I mentioned before. You've uh, got to get organised. Okay, let's look at the answers now. One to three. Question four. Five. Let's check your labelling. Six. And seven. All right. Well, I hope you can see the usefulness of this now. We're going to build this a little bit further in uh, the next presentation. So I hope to catch you then. Cheers for now.